this video, we give you a quick introduction to a great tool that helps especially investing beginners, the paper trail. Hi, my name is Till and this is the channel where you learn how to invest and how to build up your fortune. When you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring the little bell so that you don't miss any new videos. Paper trading is not very complex. It is a great tool to practice investing without really having the risk of real losses. I can recommend this especially for beginners, but also when you're already an experienced investor and you one day start to think about dipping into other, maybe more advanced fields of investing, it might be a good tool that you should definitely think about using before you actually start investing real money. As the name already says, you are not really buying stocks. You only buy and sell them on paper. In principle, you can do this at least three ways. You do this on real paper, you create a small Excel spreadsheet, or you use an online service that provides the function of a virtual portfolio. I will show you now quickly how the three ways work. Make sure you stick around till the end because we later show you the one major problem with paper trading and a way how you can deal with it. Trading on actual paper. For doing this, you really don't need much more than a piece of paper and a pen. Create a little table. On the left column, you write the companies or stocks you want to buy. As you may want to buy a specific company multiple times, this column can contain the name of a company more than one time. The second column contains the buying price. The third column will then contain the quantity of stocks you bought. You may want to review how your paper trading performed over time. Therefore, we put in the fourth column the date of your buy. I'm using the date format we use in Germany just in case you wonder. In the fifth column, you put in the total amount of money you invested in this trade. This is of course price per stock times number of stocks you bought. You can also add the transaction costs of the trade that you would have had when you bought the stock for real. This would bring the performance of your paper portfolio later closer to a real portfolio. But as a value investor, you don't need to do many trades. Value investors usually buy big time when the price is right. The sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth columns are there to later put in the price and quantity of the stocks at your sale and the total amount of money the sale will generate. Like at the buying of the stocks, you can also consider the trading costs if you like. When you later want to know how you performed, just add up the values of the column with the total values of the buying transactions and deduct the values of the column with the total values of the selling transactions. The performance per individual stock you can of course calculate by adding up the buying transactions for the stock and deduct then the selling transactions. This is some math you have to do. When you do your paper trading with Excel or any other calculation program, you can save the effort for the calculation and it is of course more clean. So let me show you how to do this with Excel. Paper trading with Microsoft Excel. Paper trading with Excel is very similar than trading on real paper. The beauty of it is that you can of course use formulas and let Excel do the math for you. For starting, I transfer the same columns to Excel that I have on my piece of paper. Now let's put in an example. This helps to create the formulas. Let's say we buy 20 stocks of the company Logitech for $100. I don't add in any transaction costs, but you can of course do this if you like. The formula to calculate the total is just multiplying the cells with the price and the quantity. For further entries, you can just copy and paste the formula. 
When you want to enter the sale of a stock, you can do basically the same, but in the columns on the right. Enter price and quantity and multiply them for the total. Additionally, you can add a line for the total of all buys and all sales. To calculate this, just use the SUM formula. In German, it is SUMME and hit ENTER. There is one more little thing you can do to make your table better and without making it too complicated. Above the table, you can add your cash at the start of your paper trading. Let's say you start with a virtual amount of $100,000. On the bottom, you can now add how much cash remains. For calculating this, put in the equal sign and then add the columns of the cash at the start minus the total of all buying transactions, because every buy reduces your cash, and plus the total of all sale transactions, because every sale of a stock increases your cash. Now the sheet shows you how much cash is left for further trades. When you want to add more rows, just click on sidebar on the left with the right mouse click and then on add row. This is of course the German version of Excel. Now it enters a new line above the marked one. I personally love to do this with my keyboard and some shortcuts. This is way faster. Just go to the start of the line with position one. Then press and hold the shift key and press the space bar. This marks the complete row. Now you can insert a new row with CTRL and the plus key. Especially when you want to add more lines, this is making it much faster. Of course, you can beef up this sheet even more. For example, you could let Excel calculate an overview of your stocks. But services like for example Yahoo Finance offer this functionality already for free with even more features. Let's look at how this works with an online service. Paper trading with an online service. I show you how to do this with Yahoo Finance, but basically you can use any other service that provides this functionality. Step one is to log in to Yahoo Finance. If you don't have an account yet, sign up and create one for free. When you signed in, hover with the arrow of the mouse over My Portfolio and then choose one portfolio you have or create a new one. For example, by clicking on My Watch List. Step two is to add companies to our paper trading list. By clicking on Add Symbol, you can add a company to your list. Let's do this with a company Logitech. I type in the US stock exchange symbol for Logitech. That's L-O-G-I. Yahoo instantly searches their database and presents some suggestions. The first one is directly Logitech. Let's click on it. Now it is added to our paper trading list. You see, this is really easy. Step three is to add the trade information. You do this by clicking on Add Lot. Now an additional menu opens. Here you type in the data of your virtual trade. As a trade date, let's use the 1st of March 2021. And we say that we bought 20 shares of Logitech. The tool calculates directly the current market value of your 20 shares. Now we want to type in the price of the shares at the date of the purchase. As we want to take, in this case, a price from the past, we quickly find out the price by looking it up on the price chart. For this, we open up the Logitech symbol in a different tab and then choose a time period of one month. When you hover over the 1st of March, you will see that at that time you could have bought Logitech for around $107 to $108 per stock. We'll use the $108 and go back to our menu from the payable trading list and type it in. 
the tool immediately calculates that the value of your position decreased so far by $80.20. The great thing about this tool is that you can sell only fractions of your original buy. Just click again on add lot. And now you can, for example, type in a sale of maybe 10 stocks from the position. You do this by typing in minus 10 stocks. First, of course, you choose a date. Then you type in minus 10 stocks. You choose a price. Let's say we made some money and type in a price of $115 per share. You see that the program immediately calculates the total number of stocks and the performance of your portfolio. Now I add some more companies so that you just have a better overview how it might look in reality. This is of course just an example. The major problem with paper trading and what you can do about it. As promised, here comes the one major problem that there is with paper trading and two options on what you can do about it. The major problem with paper trading is the emotional dimension is completely different compared to investing with real money. You won't feel the sensation, the greed and the fear that go along with real investing especially for beginners. And this is one major part of investing, controlling your emotions, seeing and realizing them, accepting that they are there and understanding how they influence you. With paper trading, you will never feel the fear of a real loss. One way to handle this problem with paper trading is to actually realize that it is there. This will, of course, not provide you with a better insight on your emotions during the investing process. But it helps to better assess what you can expect from paper trading and where you still need to find other ways of understanding and learning them. This is, by the way, one of the major topics this channel is going to cover in the future. So expect more videos on that coming soon. The second tip is to find a middle ground between paper trading and full throttle real investing. When you start with investing a small amount of money, you will not risk to lose a lot in case you make some mistakes and believe me, you will. Start for example with 5% of the total amount of money you intend to generally invest. Your risk of a loss will be limited to 5% of your capital but the emotion will probably already affect you at smaller amounts of money. This surely was the case with myself. So I would say now go play. Try out which of the three ways works best for you and tell me about it in the comment section below this video. I'd love to read your comments and opinions. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell for not missing any new episodes on how to learn to invest and how to build up your fortune.